Good morning. Uh, so today, I've got to start something new now. Um, so I think we need to do auto expand in Snippet Pixie. Um, so turn auto expand in snippets on, off, or show status is set in. So that's fine and dandy, that little to do, but we don't actually have auto expand yet. So that's actually something we need to do first. So that this thing that I need to be able to turn on and off can be turned on and off. So what is auto expand? Um, I guess I can demo it. Uh, let's have um, this thing. If I open writer um, and I'll presume, I think I've got everything up and running. So if I do that, yeah, auto expands. So I've got things like SPU, dunk, um, and if I that's all kind of stuff I can do there. Um, and so if I open up the current version of Snippet Pixie, um, let's uh, stick that next to it. Um, you can see that if I do most of my snippets end with a back tick. Um, so I can do things like CP back tick. Oh, he says it would help if I was in the right place when I did it. Um, just breaking it now. That's great. That's because Uh, the wrong focus and stuff and I'm one of the, there's a little problem with the um the snap version part of the reason why we're doing it right um so um, let's see if I get this back it's all gonna be funny isn't it there we go um yeah, so we've got various different things, uh, and let's have a look. We've got. This should, I should have somewhere I don't use a back tick. Oh, I tell you one I want to try out, which I know is awkward. You right, that one. So Alt G R and A it should give me that. Um which then in the end expands to all this. So that. Although that's actually more than, yeah, A and then that, yeah. So if I do, Well, we'll try that. I'm going to close this off because that's having problems with um, i3 and stuff. And then I'm going to do an A, Alt, G, R. So A, Alt, G, R, A. And there we get that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you can see um, we can expand and use emojis and all that kind of stuff. And of course, we've got the DT stuff. That we were working on before, even like DT calc to get all kinds of different things. These are all these little test snippets I've got. But that's the that's the deal. Um, the difference here between what you might have seen me using most of the time is that I normally pop up um, this thing here and then I can click it or I can do um, I could search for DT calc tab and just hit return and stuff like that. So, but it's the auto expand that we need to work on, uh, which we haven't got in the new version yet. <clears throat> and that's going to be fun because that 
is a dbus thing um, and using accessibility toolkits and things like that um, and you have to be very careful about the performance on that um, you have to know that you're going to be able to actually use the um, the output um, so you don't want to be monitoring keystrokes unless you're in an edit field where you can use it but first thing first is being able to get to the point where we can see all these little keystrokes um, and I don't know how to do that yet on um, Go. so um, I don't think there's any packages that would allow me to monitor the XSB toolkit. I have looked a long time ago, but let's have a quick double check. So um, the toolkit that we normally use is um, ATSPI. It's all, um, yeah, this is quite old, this one. I've looked at this one before. Um, it's not quite what I need because I don't think it has, it's, it's kind of auto-generated um, and it doesn't quite do the do. Um, it's like if I look at the types, it's just too much here. There's stuff that I really don't need. It might be helpful for the text, I suppose. But it's, yeah, it's kind of a dump of types and doesn't really kind of hang together. So I'm not sure I'm going to be able to use that. Uh, like I need an editable editable text. That's the biggie. So what have we got there? Editable text I F C. That's an unsafe pointer. Hmm. Well, that's kind of the stuff I need. do need to do basically a cell text sort of well that's a set text yeah but where's the cell stuff? So probably here. Yeah, so I could probably get this might work. My only worry is that it's relatively old. I'm not sure it's been maintained. Oh, 19th of Jan. It was regenerated. That's interesting. It's just whether it works or not, I don't know. That's the thing. If it's auto-generated, 
I can't see any tests. I don't know. And it's not been used by anyone, in theory. So it's a little bit, I'm a little bit uncertain about it. But I'll keep it in my back pocket, might be useful. Let's try different um, forms of that search, just to make sure. And um, what else might it be? There might be 80k. So what's this then? There's no documentation again. Hmm. Yeah. This is the stuff. It's the other side of the AT um, SPI. So the ATK is what a like component um, framework would use to expose um, accessibility things. So you kind of embed this kind of stuff into your components. Um, so they'll say, hey, look, I've just typed a character or a selection's just been made or this kind of stuff. Um, and then the ATSPI um, kind of is the bridge and pass that on to DBus so that you can use it. I believe. That's the way I've always looked at it anyway. Um, so have they got editable text in here? I'm not sure I can use this. This is kind of the wrong side, but it is. You can see it's, it's very similar. But I don't think I can use this as is. It's the other side I need. I need to have the, the message handler side of things. This is kind of just the interface stuff, really. The ATSPI uses knows how to do its stuff. Um, OK, so I've got to make a decision here as to whether I kind of use that ATSPI package so that I get access to these interfaces. Or do, or do the bare minimum I need, because I don't need a fraction of what's in this stuff. And if I maybe just use raw dbus messages um, and pass the info. That's an undertaking of his own, though. Maybe I should just explore that first, see if I can get anything going at all. Um, and then decide whether... whether I need to pull in... ATSPI because I don't know that 
there's no documentation on how to use it, which is my why. So like a key thing would be, well, I can't see anything to do with focus changed. Ah, here's the event listener stuff device listener okay so device listener is how I register that I want to know about um, keystrokes so I say um, when a keystroke happens and this um, window is active uh, I want to know about. I want to know about it. Yeah. Um, and the event listener is how I get to know about a window being active. Event listener callback gives me an event. It does give me a some useful stuff there although it's not um, it's not as like put together as I'm used to for when I was working with Varna but I could potentially use this This is very useful. Hmm. Mm, it's going to be weird to work out what's going on here. Mm. 
Event type string. That might work. It's maybe worth giving this a go. See if I can get something going. Maybe um, maybe I need to do a little spike and see. My worry is that. I still have to work out a lot about how it works itself. Because there's different modes here. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go for it, I think. Let's try this. Um, so we're basically wanting this package. And there's the device event. Hmm. I think it, I'm not sure. Well, well, I guess I need to try. Uh, so. What should I do? I guess I need to... Do I need to just create a little... A little app to try it out? Or shall I see if I can actually just get it going in the daemon? I think it might be easy just to try and get it going in the daemon. So all one is when this is running as is there. Um, I just want it to start spitting out information as things happen in the screen. All right, so let's throw out the ID and see. It's going to be, this is definitely going to be like poking around and seeing what we can do here. So I don't expect I'll have the full app going on here. <laughs> it's going to be a little while to work this one out. Okay, so we're done with placeholders. Um, 
and I am going to have to, what are we going to do here? So, in main, that's okay, so it comes in and it sets up a little um, a thread to monitor whether it's going to be killed or not and then it does a run so we'd go and do a run after doing config and then in the run open the database do the thing and then wait So it could be, we could do it in the manager. So we get a new manager. Mm -hmm. Think. So see, most of the action happens in the D bus stuff. We create a new service. Um, and that's what really does the work. could do something very similar. So instead of being a debus service, well, I guess that's the difference. So if this AT uh, SPI, in theory, I 
I can do a new device listener. Stick that into the struct as a reference. And then register some uh, callbacks and things. Screen went blank then. Hopefully that hasn't affected anything for you. Uh, okay. It's hard when you don't know how this works and whether it works. <laughs> okay, I think what I might do is create another file here um, as the auto expand. Listener as such. So that we do new service. So what I kind of want to do boys. I'm in two minds because in theory I could put it as part of the manager. If it was part of the manager. Would that work? No, I think that's confusing things. I think what I need to do, because in here I can then check the config and say whether or not to do, what I should do is do something like, um, Just 
start auto expand service. Do something like um, serve dot auto expand. equals right let's call it auto expander and we'll give it that and it will be Yeah, and then we'll have a different package, I think. Auto expander dot new and we'll give it a manager, which in this case is serve snippets. So that's yeah, that's a bit awkward that. But I might I might end up renaming that. But we'll come back to that. Uh, okay, so we need to create an auto expander. Yeah, I think that's good. Actually, should I just take a copy of this as a base? Probably should. Well, actually, maybe just that paid top bit. And then I'll just fix it up. So I'm going to take that. But before I forget, we're going to have Auto expander. It's going to be a pointer to auto. Actually, I'm supposed to have this as lowercase, am I? Okay, auto expander.
And now we're going to create a new internal for the moment. Directory. Auto expander. And in here, new go file. Auto expander. Stick that in. Rename all the things. So manager becomes auto expander. And we're going to have a manager here. That's a pointer to the manager manager. Okay, if um, so, we we'll want manager here, manager here, manager, that's fine as a description, and then we're going to have this as I check what the manager's got. I forgot. I mm, haven't got any kind of health check thing really. So I'll leave that for the moment. So here we want auto expander. It's a new auto expander. And the manager is the manager. Don't want to migrate. We want to return the auto expander. Don't need that anymore. Okay, this is all going to go horribly wrong now. Right, we have auto expander here. That's part of the service again. It's, it's kind of the daemon, really. I should maybe pull that out into the main.
Or maybe this shouldn't really be the thing. Maybe I should have something up in here. Maybe it should really be part of config, but we'll see. Um, and then here we've got auto expand a new, and we're passing the service. So the the new auto expander does nothing, but it shouldn't cause any problems at the moment either. See, really, this should not know about the auto expander with debus stuff. It's not. Does it need to know anything about it? It might need to. It might need to turn it on and off as part of its own services. Hmm, let's see. But I might move that I might move a bunch of this stuff out later. Um but that's a refactor job. So we've got a new auto expander that does nothing but keep a reference to the manager which is okay at the moment. We're doing that here. Hmm. Actually, I should treat it more like this. because then I can deregister on close because I do need to do that if I at the moment I've got no way of deregistering all my event listeners and stuff device listeners and event listeners that I will need for the auto expansion so I should actually treat it a bit more like the dbus service and make sure I just bring it up, hold it locally in the daemon, and then on close, deregister. Yeah, okay. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move that up into the daemon. And get rid of this here. Where is the delete? There it is. Yes. I am going to... Yeah, that's in package main now. That's good. Um, and like dbus... I need something like that. So 
which is the same thing. Yeah, I do need comfy coming in. Although the manager is also useful. Okay. So. New auto expander, and I want like in the D bus that a config and a manager. I'm going to, in theory, start up a new thing. I want config in there. Yeah. So keep a reference. Do that. Return the auto expander. Then in the daemon, we don't need to know about it anymore. So that's back to how it was, which is good. And then I need a close as well, though. So we'll have On, uh, well, actually, it's on. Um, we're going to do a shorthand for this AE. And it's going to be an auto expander. It's going to be closed with no response other than an error, maybe. Now, moment, because they got nothing to do. Okay. 
and then in main, oops, main, we're going to do something like that. Auto expander. Actually, when I do the new service, yeah, I do. Do that. A lot of copy and paste today. Yeah, because it's got an error message reply, I have to do it this way. I was just going to do it automatically there, but All right, so auto expander. So why is that complaining then? Oh. Dunk. Okay. To do No, I was going to say to do wrap with um, whether we should start it or not. But that's going to have to be an internal thing. So that if someone changes the settings. Kind of have to tell the auto expander. to turn on. Mm. Good point there. <laughs> so maybe it should be stuffed into the service. So that the manager can go to expand to turn on and off. Hmm, maybe. Okay. For the time being, Uh, Dbus, what tests have we got? Not a lot. Well, actually quite a few. Got scale test ads. In. So it always starts off. It's just calling the internal functions, isn't it? So it's 
I haven't actually got a test for this yet then. But let's just make sure nothing else is broken. So we've updated, we've got a new auto expander. And the demon has changed. <laughs> okay. All uh, right. Make a test. Everything passes because no, nothing's been disrupted. That's good. But now we actually need to start doing things. Uh, should I commit this? And then I can keep track and roll back if I need to. Okay. It's everything done, isn't it? Okay, uh, so now to actually start doing things then. Have I got time for that? I could try, I could just see if I can get this, um, this library. To kind of hook up or not. I can try. Uh, so... Do it here. I'm going to do a go, go get so that I've got it available. It's part of the reason why I wanted to do the command before I start pulling in this um, package and stuff. If I need to roll back. There we go. So we've already got problems. Because it was going to use Seago stuff. <laughs> hmm.
Let's see what we got. So we want that potentially. Let's see if that's available. So I guess I just need to install that and hopefully that will give me the library headers I need and the package config. Let's have a quick look. G object introspection. It's not a lot of info there. I'll install it and then I'll see um, whether I need to use this or not because I don't really want to be pulling in all these introspection libraries and stuff, but we'll see. I we'll kind of have to, I guess. Hmm. Anyway, let's try to go get again. Unused undefined, okay. Unused undefined. It has been a key definition, has no field or method unused. Hmm. Now, does that mean it didn't install? Yes, possibly. Yeah, definitely didn't, so it's not been added as a package. So basically, no, that package is not ready for use. Can't use it. I guess I can have a quick look at the source and see if it's an easy fix. But if it's auto generated, that's not really going to work. Have a quick look though. Um, let's do uh, we'll do a get clone
but it's quite big as well. Not as big as I thought it might be. Where was the... Uh... ATSPI Auto doesn't have an unused, it has an unsafe. Oh, hold on a minute. What's that P? That's what I need. P. Unsafe pointer. So what I need is there must be somewhere oh there we go <laughs> straight away it is a key definition Uh, type A T S P I K D F. Okay. This might be a bit of a sticky point then. I can't actually install it. So where is that C coming from then? In theory, it's coming from the headers. I'm not going to start going looking in the headers then. Yeah. That's a bit of a problem. I 
think we found our answer. I don't think I can use this ATSPI library. I think the autogen is not quite complete. So I think what I'm going to have to do is just start monitoring the dbus service um, for particular messages and then build up um, a bunch of structs that can decipher the data and do the right thing and then also um, post back on it as well. Basically manually create an AT SPI. Um, Dbus interface as such. The alternative would be to start using Seago do it manually that way. I'm not sure I really, really, really want to do that. It would be kind of nice to have an abstracted interface that does it just through dbus because there's i've got um i'm already using the dbus library and that seems to be working really well uh, i think i've even got an output yeah must have been doing some stuff there uh, where is it which one am I on mine or someone else's the original okay Possibly, what does the eavesdrop do as a listening for everything? Just going to monitor everything and print it out. Okay. Should we give that a go? I will... Let 
let's do this then. So let's do go run use drop. So that's now listening to everything. And it's gonna get messy. So if I now open writer. Wow. If I do one character, it doesn't get it. Oh, there we go. That was late though. I'm not seeing. I want the alley service, so let's look for that as A, 11, Y, nothing. Okay, so maybe it's just not listening for that. Do I need to change it to do that then? Yeah, that's different, isn't it? It's calling that stuff there. Hmm. Okay, I'm going to have to investigate this another time because I have to get on with my day, but I could probably hack up something here to find um what's monitor let's have a quick look at monitor right it's the same thing I'm just doing it a slightly different way Yeah. What I actually need is I need something like. So I I think I added this client. Probably been fixed up since I added it. Um. Yeah. Don't, yeah, it's not exactly what I need, because I need it to keep on listening. Anyway, I am now wasting a bit of time here. Um, I need to think about this. I need to look at... I need to look to see whether this is a good way of going. I think it might be, because it'll be a lot smaller in scope than the ATSPI library which doesn't seem to be working anyway at the moment or at least not installable so not the go package anyway um yeah okay things to ponder i think uh, so yeah so i'll leave that as is at the moment um, we've got the skeleton there, 
and then we're going to have to do something here, right here, to start bringing up listeners and stuff. Um, which will then start monitoring. the keystrokes and window actions and stuff. Yeah, okay. Another day, I'll think about that. So, um, in the meantime, thanks for watching, um, and uh, until next time, take care.